Hello, brothers and sisters. Good to see you. Can you believe we're living in such times? The humbling of humanity, we could call these times, like a modern-day Tower of Babel. We're cruising along, thinking everything is going great, loving our accomplishments, our power, our pleasures, so many other things, and then it all stops. A little microscopic unseen enemy brings things to a standstill. The housing market, as you know, it's at a standstill. The job market, unemployment rates are going through the roof. Stock market, massive crashes happening. The word recession is quickly on our minds. Our schools, our restaurants, libraries, businesses, closed. It's times like these that the admonition from James seems so wise. He tells us in James 4.13, Come now, you who say, Today or tomorrow we will go into such and such a town and spend a year there and trade and make profit. Yet you do not know what tomorrow will bring. What is your life? For you are a mist that appears for a little while and then vanishes. Instead you ought to say, if the Lord wills, we will live and do this or that. As it is you boast in your arrogance, all such boasting is evil. So, beloved, we need to pray. We need to pray that God would break our pride as mankind and lift our eyes to him in repentant faith. Well, it is in such humbling times that I'm sitting here in front of this camera today. You'll have to forgive me in advance for any quirks or mistakes in speaking to you uh, here today. I don't have experience on YouTube or anything of that sort, but such times call for innovation. Even if the substitute is not ideal. That certainly is the case for what we're doing here what I'm doing here today. But here's the thing. We can't replicate the face-to-face. -face. We can't replicate hugs and handshakes. We can't replicate being together and saying and hearing amen. Hebrews 10 exhorts us to not neglect meeting together as is the habit of some, but to encourage one another and all the more as you see the day drawing near. How do we obey that when in doing so could potentially spread a disease that kills? But we can't. Not for now. So praise the Lord for technology. This is our attempt to still feed together on God's word. Enjoy a measure of fellowship in doing so. As mentioned in uh, my email a couple of days ago, we're not meeting for the next two Sundays. And as you're probably thinking, it, it could go longer than that. As James already told us, we will just say, Lord willing, we'll meet again after these two Sundays. So in the meantime, I'm going to do a couple of things with these videos that I'm sending out. Number one, I want to encourage you with the Word of God. I mean, where else can we go? As Peter said to, to Jesus in that memorable scene, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life, and we have that very same mentality. We have God's Word. We don't have to turn anywhere else. Where else can we go for hope? We have God's Word, which gives us a sure and certain hope 
a hope that cannot be touched by any virus or any earthquake or war or anything else. We have God's word which continue, can continue to be used by his spirit to conform us into the image of Jesus Christ. We have God's word which can sustain us with hope and peace, even joy as we, yes, groan with creation, longing for the redemption of our bodies. So practically, I'm putting together some messages to share, not just on Sundays, but it will start this Sunday, but several messages, maybe two or three a week. And specifically, these messages will be going through uh, a portion of Scripture from Philippians chapter 4. It's a passage you're familiar with, many of you, from Philippians 4, verses 4 through 9. This is a text that is so timely with where we are at. Give us such encouragement as we do so. Let me just read it right now, though again, I'll be preaching from it this coming Sunday, and I'll share another link with a separate video for that. But here's the scripture we read. Philippians 4.4, 4, where it says, Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say, rejoice. Let your reasonableness be known to all. The Lord is at hand. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there's any excellence or anything worthy of praise, think about these things. And what you've learned and received and heard and seen in me, practice these things, and the God of peace will be with you. Well, amen. I pray that those are going to be encouraging words as we spend time looking at that portion in the days ahead. Number two, besides wanting to encourage you with the word, I want to encourage you, and this is really just uh, piggybacking off of the first one, but I want to encourage you towards scripture memory. If we ever lived in a time where we need to have quick and constant access to God's word, it's now. When another wave of depressing headlines comes through your phone or the news on TV or on the newspaper or from a telephone call where someone else says, did you hear what the latest is? When it's tempting to fall into anxiety and fear, we need to be able to renew our minds immediately. To take a passage like this, um, to do not be anxious about anything, and then to quickly remind yourself of this and to apply that and to pray, and even to pray with thanksgiving, to rejoice always, and so on. Renewing our minds with God's word. This passage in particular, I commend to you to memorize uh, so that you can have it quickly uh, at hand. If you're not near your Bible, if, if, you, if you don't have your phone on, uh, to quickly pull up an app. You just need it right away when the fear starts to rise yet again. Number three, I want to encourage us with prayer. Uh, with prayer. Scripture tells us to continue steadfastly in prayer, being watchful in it with thanksgiving. So I will pray in our times together here in the coming days, in these coming videos, I actually want to invite you to uh, send by email any current prayer requests that you have. And then I want to take a, a couple minutes and share share those with, with all of us so we can uh, be praying together. Uh, so please uh, do that, and we'll look forward to uh, sharing that time in prayer together, even if we can't see one another we can use this time to uh, spur us on towards prayer. Number four, I want to encourage you with, with songs. Uh, I'm not going to sit here at my desk and, and sing for you, uh, but I am going to send you some links to some good songs, songs that we've done many times, 
songs that are familiar and uh, songs that you can play either before these videos or after you know maybe instead of turning on the news um, you know in the evening turn on a couple of these songs play a couple of these songs that I'll I'll send your direction uh, songs that I'm hoping that would fit in well with these messages uh, that I'll share with you. Beloved, I pray that uh, doing these things, these four things, and maybe some more things will come about as well, but I pray that they can be of great encouragement. I know it's not the same as meeting face to face, and I long to be with you all again, face to face. This screen thing is nothing near uh, as good. But nonetheless, we're thankful for it and pray that the Lord can use it uh, in, this, in this time. So until we do meet again, may the Lord use this to warm our hearts. Now, one other thing I want to I wanna do uh, before we finish is I just want to encourage you uh, with the coming messages that come. And even right now, I want us to think of each other, uh, literally. I want us to actually think of the people that we would be seeing and hugging and shaking hands with on a Sunday morning. So when you gather your family around Sunday morning, I'm hoping to send out a message um, so that you can watch it Sunday morning together as a family. Uh, when you do so, I want you to literally think of one another. So think of Nancy Miller. With that uh, mischievous uh, look, uh, twinkle uh, in her eye. Uh, with Betty Engel or Sam and Janet uh, talking quietly with her. I think, of course, of uh, Dan and Kathy. I think of them smiling as I'm preaching, where they're just soaking up uh, the Word of God. As I shift around the room, I think of my, my son Nathan who oftentimes, uh, when he's running the computer for the projection, you hear him singing loud as he's doing so. Uh, I certainly can't help but think of, of Jim and Doris Bryant. Jim, Mr. Mr. Faithful. Uh, Doris, playing her beautiful music. I think of Art and Dorothy uh, being physically weak, but if at all possible, they're going to be there. Uh, to be with God's people and to hear God's word. I can't help but think of Jackie then, uh, likely cracking a joke with Art, um, or thinking of her playing drums, or any number of other things. I think of the bishops that, with the warmth emanating from Nate and Lindsay. And of course, there are three girls oftentimes stealing the show. Uh, I think of Brian and Denise, and Ron and Roberta, and Dan and Annette, and Roy and Hilder, all of whom are, are faithful servants uh, that you can count on week after week after week. I think of Glenn and his uh, sharp hat, his quiet disposition. I think of, more on the contrary to that, I think of uh, Kevin Stewart, uh, with his quick wit that he has already started to share with us. I, of course, think of, uh, also on, on that line, I think of George sharing his humor with us, and Lois uh, supporting and, and smiling uh, as he shares uh, this week's newest joke. I think of uh, John and Connie, as I make my way around to the other side, I think of John and Connie and they're uh, whispering back and forth to each other throughout the service. I think of the Anderson and the Nowak uh, crew, a mixture of, of bustling movement, of rapt attention and silent musings. And then there's the loyal friends, uh, certainly Neil and Larry and Colleen. Uh, hopefully our snowbirds will be making it back with us soon. Marilyn and Emma Jean. Of course, I think of Gary and Sue and Margaret, too. Can any more sunshine come out of 
out of that pew. Of course, there is Patrick Flynn coming in late, uh, sliding in predictably. Jeff and Linda and Jed. We think of them as well. Certainly, it's been a rough stretch for them, but beloved, be sure that they think of us and are full of love for us and support us, even at a distance. Then yes, I think of the Hansberries and the Marshall clan with their kids making noises that mostly bring a smile to our faces. We know that these dear parents are raising their children by God's grace uh, in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. Of course, who can forget Sawyer, uh, maybe yelling amen after his daddy sings another song. There's others who come now and then, certainly, as well. I think of Christopher and Orion. I think of uh, Darius and maybe sometimes Kyle. But I take all this time to say uh, that we may be apart physically, but let's keep ever close in spirit. Think of the letter uh, of Philippians and then the matter, many other letters that the Apostle Paul or the others like John or, or Peter wrote. You know, these were people who were separated. They couldn't see each other face to face. And certainly besides the teaching, the admonition that was happening, part of those letters, a big part of those letters, was that of nurturing the warmth and the relationship with one another. Uh, I would love the same type of thing to happen uh, during this, this time that we find ourselves in, that as imperfect as this uh, method of uh, communication is in comparison with being face to face, that God would use it to grow us uh, more and more uh, in this unprecedented time that we're living in. Let me pray and then uh, I'll be finished here for, for today. God, I thank you so much for the body of Christ, which you have put together, and even if we're apart physically, that we are together in spirit. We thank you that it's your spirit. We thank you that your word teaches us, and that by your spirit, your word can shape us, even while apart. Oh God, do a mighty work in our congregation. Oh God, do a mighty work in our land, in our world. Oh God, bring about great humility that people would be drawn to you, would come to saving faith through such a time as this. Lord, you are sovereign. We trust you. We look to you for your grace for these times. We pray all of these things together and all of God's people said, Amen. Amen.